Uh, we're going to start today a uh, the presentation of a set of rules that will allow us to give the derivatives of pretty much all functions that we would ever be interested in uh, without having to go through the definition. And uh, from now on, whenever we are asked to uh, produce the derivative of a function, uh, we should always use these rules unless uh, we're told to uh, use the definition. Uh, that, that, of course, goes for exercises. In general, in pretty much everything we'll be doing, we'll be using these rules. So let's begin with uh, one of the, um, some, some very elementary rules that we have already mentioned, but I think it would be very important to um, make them as explicit as possible. So when we have two functions, and we take their sum, then the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. We have seen this and used it a lot when we talked about derivatives of polynomials. And also, uh, the derivative of uh, a scalar multiple of a function, a constant multiple of a function, I should say, is the corresponding constant times the derivative of the function. So we have this two basic rules that allow us to um, break down finding the derivative to the summons of uh, the expression that we have. Then uh, the next rule that we're going to see is the rule that pretty much generalizes um, what we had seen about polynomials, about monomials in particular. So uh, we're going to see what the uh, derivative of x to the a is in general no matter what a is. And it follows pretty much the same um, description as we, the, the same e equation as it did for uh, natural exponent um, a, uh, n. And it's the exponent times uh, the power reduced by uh, one on the exponent. So, um, so for polynomials, it's something that we have already seen. So the derivative of x to the fourth is four x cubed. Uh, but now we can uh, ask questions such as, uh, what is the derivative of square root of x? Uh, and why do we do that? Because square root of x is x to the one half and the derivative of x to the one half will be one half x to one half minus one. And how much is one half minus one? It's negative one half. And remember that we saw this uh, derivative as we were doing, um, as we were finding uh, derivatives of functions using the definition. And uh, it's, uh, I think, quite useful here to remember that this can be written as one half x to the one half, which is the same thing as one over uh, two uh, square root of x. So in other words, um, we might, uh, say here that the derivative of square root of x is one over two square root of x. And let's remember this separately as a consequence of the uh, chain rule. Uh, I should say here that uh, if um, the exponent of the function is not a natural number, um, then we should be considering the domain of definition to be just the positive numbers. Uh, also, zero would be fine if uh, the exponent is positive. Uh, there is there is one uh, mild exception here. If the exponent is um, um, a negative uh, integer, like negative one, negative two, negative three, then the domain of definition can be taken to be all uh, the uh, non-zero numbers. So um, why don't we proceed with um, a couple more examples of applying uh, the um, product rule. So let's look at the derivative of one over X. Uh, again, in order to find the derivative of one over X based on the uh, power rule, we should actually write it as X to the negative one and the derivative will be negative one. So the exponent that we have in front uh, times uh, x to minus one minus one. How much is that? x to the negative two. So 
uh, minus x to the negative 2, which is the same thing as negative 1 over x squared. And that's, again, another uh, rule that, uh, or another specific derivative that we should remember, that is uh, the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. It's, uh, again, very useful. Nobody will say anything if we write it as um, negative x to the negative 2, but it's very useful to remember it exactly in this form. And then we can uh, pretty much uh, consider examples that could be um, could, could uh, occur with different exponents. So for example, let's ask ourselves, uh, what if we have uh, to take the derivative of the cube root of x here, it is where it is advisable for you to pause the video and try to do this uh, yourselves. And here's the solution. So you will think of this as uh, x to the one third, and the derivative will be uh, one third times x to the negative two thirds. Uh, and I, I will not try to write this in any better way. I will leave it uh, like this. Uh, or Let's do something like uh, the derivative of um, three quarters. Uh, that will be uh, three quarters times x to three quarters minus one is negative one to the fourth. If you have a very generic uh, exponent, let's say the derivative of square root of two, again, you're not going to see something that will enlighten you um, much over the general expression of the chain rule. This is as general as it gets pretty much, as generic as it gets. Uh, but let's do, let's do an interesting problem here, which will combine uh, some of the things that we uh, just saw. So let's say that somebody asks you to find the derivative of x plus one over square root of x. And at first you might say, well, uh, what does this have to do with what we just saw? I mean, uh, here we have the quotient of two functions um, and we certainly haven't given any rule that uh, gives us uh, the derivative of the quotient of two functions. We're actually going to do this uh, in the le next lecture. But for the moment being, uh, what we could do is actually break up this uh, fraction and this will become uh, the derivative of x over square root of x plus one over square root of x. Now the idea is think of both of them as power functions. That's the idea. So the first one is obviously square root of x because it's x to the first over x to the one half. You subtract the exponents that, that square root of x plus uh, one over square root of x. As I told you, if you want to make your life easier, uh, you can write this as x to the one half uh, plus x to the negative one half. And... Uh, uh, let's explain this. I mean, uh, some people might be wondering why this is the case. One over square root of X is one over X to the one half. And exactly because you have it on the denominator, you bring it on the top, the exponent will become the opposite. So that's that's why you get this. And, uh, and so the derivative here will be one half uh, X to the negative one half uh, plus negative one half times X to the negative one half minus one that's x to the negative three halves. And we found the derivative. Uh, again, in this case where uh, you have these two components and one of them cannot be uh, made uh, uh, significantly less complicated, then uh, we will have the, uh, we will keep them both like this in exponential form. Okay. Um, so, now let's uh, look at the derivative of a very special uh, function, uh, the exponential function. And it turns out that uh, the derivative of a to the x is actually equal to uh, a to the x uh, times ln a. Um, and here you can see right away why uh, the number e is singled out as a very useful basis for uh, the exponential function because we know that the ln of e is one, right? So what does this mean? 
This means that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So what this tells you is that among all exponential functions, the only one exponential function that is equal to its own derivative is e to the x. And hence, the number e somehow is singled out by this property and emerges as the uh, most useful basis for uh, the exponential function and also the most useful basis for uh, the logarithm. So um, uh, now you can see it's, it's sort of demystified. I mean, one could, uh, of course, try to, to see how um, you know, these four formulas are proven, but again, this is a uh, non-proof-oriented course, so we're not going to get into that, even though uh, the whole uh, presentation of these formulas can become very, very um, interesting. And uh, also the pinpointing of the uh, number E. Uh, but uh, so, so in other words, to give some more examples, the derivative of two to the X is going to be two to the X ln two, or the derivative of uh, three to the X uh, will be three to the X ln three. And let me show you a really nice trick here. It's something that we will be able to do later, but uh, uh, somebody might ask, so what is the derivative of E to the four X? Right? What is the derivative of it to the 4x? And at first, you might think to yourself that, oh, there's no way we can answer this question because we know how to find the derivative of e or uh, a uh, to, to x, any number to x, but not to 4x. And there is no uh, immediate conclusion that one uh, could draw. So, but there's this very nice trick because you can consider um, e to the 4x as e to the 4 or raised, all raised to the x. That's one of the properties of exponents. So now your base is e to the 4. So this will be e to the 4 all raised to the x power times ln of e to the 4th. And of course, ln of e to the 4th is 4. So this will be e to the 4x times 4. I remind you in general that ln of e to the uh, 20 number, um, I put the stars here, is equal to star. Okay, this is a property that anybody should remember. It's pretty much the defining property for uh, logarithms. Uh, okay, so uh, now to make things uh, a little more interesting, uh, we will try to pretty much mix everything up and uh, to this end, we're going to present the product rule. So this tells you what the derivative of the product of two functions is. And you will see, you will realize that uh, it's not what you might have hoped uh, it would be. So it's not the derivative of f times the derivative of g. That's not what it is. Uh, instead, it's the derivative of f times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. And uh, this is what is known as the product rule. And let's look at some examples. So for example, if we have the derivative of x squared times three to the x, then uh, this is going to be the derivative of x squared times three to the x plus x squared times the derivative of three to the x, uh, which is uh, two x, that's the derivative of x squared times three to the x plus x squared times three to the x ln three. Um, let's see some more examples, so how about you try to find the derivative of square root of x times e to the x. Again, pause the video, try to find the answer to this question. So it will be the derivative of square root of x, which is one over two square root of x, times the second function, which is e to the x, plus square root of x times the derivative of e to the x, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, uh, let's do one more. Uh, so how about derivative of 
5x over x. Uh, here you need to do a to do a little trick. So think of this as 5 to the x times 1 over x, right? And the derivative of this would be 5 to the x ln 5 times 1 over x plus 5 to the x times negative 1 over x squared. And that's it. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching.